Oscar Lopez took up the mantle of leadership of the Lopez Group of Companies in 1999, shortly after the Asian crisis blew up. He was about to turn 70, and the problems he inherited seemed insurmountable. So I asked myself, how does a 70-year-old try to take over a company with problems because it was in the midst of uh, the Asian financial crisis? I had to keep fit. So I devised a wellness program for myself, and then I also imparted that to all the employees. Oscar Lopez is by nature deliberate and methodical. He ponders a problem, thinks hard to arrive at the solutions, and works toward it slowly but surely. His steady, undramatic, and determined management style has been vital in the continued success of the Lopez Group. It was just getting all the people together telling them we're facing this big problem. Let's put our heads together and see whether we can solve it. There was no dramatic solution. It was over a long period of time, practically 10 years, before we could say we're, we're practically out of the woods now. Well, he's very quiet and effective. He had mentioned that he's going to step down when all the problems of the company are cleared and he has done that. So you admire him for the patience, for his perseverance, and for his effectiveness in eventually getting everything done. Oscar Lopez and the Lopez Group have lived through many crises, war and its devastation, martial law, and the loss of the family's business empire to the dictator, local and global economic crises, as well as hostile governments. He believes that what has saved the Lopez Group again and again are its distinctive values, a pioneering entrepreneurial spirit, teamwork, nationalism, social justice, a strong work ethic, integrity, concern for employee welfare and wellness, and business excellence. These are the core values that his father, Don Eugenio H. Lopez, emphasized during his turn at the helm. The three greatest influences in my life was my father, my father, and my father. <laughs> you know, he started this CSR movement long before it was articulated as a philosophy. He, he really felt that companies could not keep all the income to itself. That was the worst thing that could happen. He says, we must share it with the community. So that started Meralco and eventually all the other companies in the Lopez Group to form foundations that went into CSR work. I've known the Lopez Group for many years. Not only Oscar, but his father. And I greatly admire the family for always being willing to sacrifice everything for what is right. Very few companies in the country are willing to do that. No. Like his father, Oscar believes that the Lopez Group must strive for goals larger than just profit. Business excellence, while important, is not enough. He supports the various programs of the foundations under the Lopez Group. Among others, the Paliparan Resettlement Project, the Microfinance Program of Bayan Foundation, and the Knowledge Channel. He has also been a generous supporter of the Ateneo de Manila and its educational mission. He is a lover of books, history, and culture. Thus, he gives full support to initiatives in those areas, such as the Lopez Memorial Museum. The, the museum was set up by his father, Eugenio Lopez Sr. But uh, my, my father um, felt very strongly about the museum, especially, most especially in the library and its archival holdings. So. But of all his advocacies, he is most passionate about caring for the environment. When I came into this business, I, I, I imparted this 
love of the environment, you might say. It was good that some of our businesses turned out to be green, very green. Like uh, we took over EDC, which was into geothermal. It went into hydroelectric, so that's also clean. Uh, our program is really based on a good environment and love of nature. So I decided to tell them to go into reforestation. They were doing it in some ways, but when I gave them the program, and now it's called Bin Hit, they started going about it systematically so that today we are doing a thousand hectares per year for the next 10 years, spending quite a bit of money to propagate the best species in the country, hardwoods. No? It, it just illustrates also how, how uh, I guess, his love no? for, for, for the environment. Many of the things that we've chosen to do, and in fact, even many of the way, uh, the way we've really chosen to, to pursue our energy business and our power business, environmentalism is really built into it. And it's built into it in such a way that you can make an impact on, on both no? the environment and then also on the business. But I have a bigger goal. Then he will tackle 10,000 hectares in 10 years. I told myself, I think if this country can have all of its barangays undertake a program of reforestation within their own area, can you imagine how fast that reforestation can, can take place? And it will happen. He will make it happen. He will do it one step at a time. Just as he recently scaled the mountains of Apo, Kanlaon, and Pulag, he will not stop, no matter how long it takes and how hard the climb, until he reaches the summit. I like to think that the, these values that I am trying to impart now in this contained in this small card will help us get to the next century or two centuries from now if we follow it. All this value.